Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes, you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Hello, 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 Rebel Hearts. Welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves. I'm so excited you're joining me today. And we're talking long distance today from Los Angeles to Manila and the Philippines. And I'm so excited about today's interview because the woman who's on today's show is not just an amazing healer, but has amazing wisdom and knowledge. She's also a dear friend and soul sister of mine. So I'm excited to introduce her to you today in a moment. And as you know, we are doing a series here at Rebel Hearts on spirituality, consciousness, and how to use ancient wisdom in today's modern world to create a more joyful, balanced, and harmonious life. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But before I introduce her to you, let me share something with you about a technology that I discovered that I'm really excited about, and I want to tell you a little bit more about it. The company's name is Amcoil, and the mission of Amcoil is to empower people to be stewards of their own health and to create wellness within their family and community. Amcoil is a modern wellness tool combining a powerful PEMF delivery system and an app called Better Guide. Better Guide utilizes voice analysis biofeedback to determine the customized tones your body is asking for, then place these frequencies back into your body emitting them through a modified Tesla coil, penetrating them deep into the cells. The result is that the human biology quickly begins to return to the balanced and harmonized state that nature intended. Microbes, metals, and toxins are neutralized by using a Tesla-based PEMF delivery system. The Amcoil combines the right technology to cleanse the body and support nutrition organ systems on a cellular level. Amcol combines scientifically proven technology to create the first customized PEMF wellness device made for home use for the entire family. This system takes absolute no effort any other than turning it on. Want a more in-depth understanding? Then visit their website at amcol.com and tell them that you heard about it on Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves to receive your first Amcol sound transmission through a modified Tesla coil. And Rebel Hearts, I've been trying out the technology. I just ordered my own device. I'm so excited. It's coming out in June, the international unit that is transportable. I can take it on the plane with me when I go traveling. And I've seen amazing results. So check out amcol.com. There's a lot of really cool more information on the technology and a few videos. And hopefully you're inspired by it. So let's shift gears over here and let me tell you a little bit about what Leah is up to. Dr. Leah Bernard is considered one of the leading experts in the area of well-being, natural health, and personal growth in the country today. She utilizes the leading-edge principles and practices of psychoneurology and integrative health and has helped and guided many to the lives of happiness and thriving with spirituality at its foundation. She's an active member of the American and International Board of Psychoneurology. Dr. Bernardo's training programs have currently evolved into personal development and empowerment workshops, which focus on self-help, changing limiting beliefs, and personal growth, such as enlightened leadership, values and attitudes, developing a mindset of professionalism and success, mindfulness, living without stress and anxiety, winning in the game of life, and wellness for the body, mind, and soul. She also facilitates corporate retreats and provides executive consultancy services. All her work is spiritual in nature and is focused on personal empowerment from the integration of spirit, mind, and body. Her advocacy is on teaching self-love and creating awareness on the importance of developing a foundation of self-nurturing and self-acceptance for mind, body, and spirit well-being. Rebel Hearts, help me to welcome Dr. Leo Bernardo. Hey, Leo, I am so, so happy you're here today. Welcome to Rebel Hearts. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. It's so wonderful to, to talk to you across the ocean and, and, and see you. So thank you for taking the time to come and, and talk to our Rebel Hearts audience today. Thank you. 
<laughs> so Rebel Hearts, I met Leah a few years ago, and it's it's amazing. We had this instant sisterly soul sister connection i'm so excited because i haven't seen her in nearly a year so i'm, I'm excited to share her wisdom with you and and dive deep into the topic of self-love but before we do that at, Leah, at the beginning of each show i like the interviews to share their own hero's journey because a lot of us might be out there struggling trying to find out what is my mission what am i here to do what is it that can help me dis you know, discover my path? What was it for you personally that got you on the path that you are walk that, that the path that you're walking right now? Well, it was my personal journey. It mm -hmm. was um, it I was really searching for a really long time for something outside of me to mm -hmm. make me happy. Okay. And I did that <laughs> for quite a while. Uh -huh. And I went through everything from uh I guess um, from every single doctor I could find, mm -hmm. I, I tried many different paths and many different ways. Um, and then I got into natural healing, which mm. actually changed my life. And it was through natural healing that I, and energy healing that I discovered, um, essentially discovered myself. Mm -hmm. And I started that journey inwards and I, come into an understanding and because of my experience that really the only way to happiness is through self-love mm. and i found that in so i guess after all those healing experiences <laughs> i decided to become one myself and um and that's what led me to my current path mm -hmm. in this whole in this whole journey of trying to really grow and develop from within. Mm -hmm. And I have found that in many years that I've been counseling and talking to people that really underlying cause of unhappiness is a lack of self-love, mm -hmm. a lack of self-acceptance and being too judgmental of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I've made it my advocacy to <laughs> teach self-love um, <laughs> because it's something I feel that everyone needs across any culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you were on the journey of, I want to say, the journey of the seeker, looking for the solution, realizing you weren't happy no matter what your environment looked like, what did you find was the biggest challenge you were facing? And how then did you discover, how did you find the solution to that challenge? Was it something that happened overnight or was it a continuation? Oh, it was it was trying everything because if something wouldn't work, then mm -hmm. I'd go to the next thing and then mm -hmm. the next thing. And then finally, I discovered Reiki. I started with Reiki. Mm -hmm. And it was through that that I finally said, okay, here's the answer I'm looking for, but I needed to go deeper after a certain number of years. And that's when I discovered psychoneurology through mm -hmm. you. And um, and that's exactly what has brought me to my current path mm -hmm. in in terms of really helping others find their own source of happiness because mm -hmm. it's helped me tremendously. Yeah. Now, do you f what 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 are you finding with the clients you're working with? What do you usually see? You know, what I talk about we talk about imprinting in psychoneurology, right? Yes. What do you yes. feel like is the strongest imprinting people have nowadays that is not serving their highest good? You know, um, I'd like to think it's cultural to the Philippines. However, mm -hmm. I'm discovering that it's not. Mm -hmm. um, it. it <laughs> Um, the belief that self-love is selfish. Mm, mm -hmm. And a lot of, I, I have that across the board. As a matter of fact, last night, I was just having dinner with some friends and they were saying that, you know, self-love is selfish. Mm. And, and I had to go into to this whole explanation <laughs> of how it's the healthiest thing that you can mm -hmm. do for yourself. 
Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, you know, that is the imprint that I'm seeing in so many cultures, being from Germany, having lived in Canada, having been in the U.S. for like 70 and a half years. I feel there's a paradigm that we're in, in currently shifting. There is a mass movement that to shift that paradigm, but the paradigm has been really based on the virtue of sacrifice and suffering. Like, the more you suffer, the more virtuous you are, the better of a person you are. And it's been so strongly imprinted, so... No Absolutely. wonder that you you know people are believing the need to suffer, and that and self love. Yeah. Suffer, you're a good person. Yeah, and mm. there there are um, beliefs that are so strong and so ingrained that mm. it it really uh, requires a lot of dedication mm. on the part of the patient <laughs> yeah. to get to a state of self acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you just said you had a conversation last night where you were taught or told that love is selfish. What do you answer when someone says that to you? I give them scenarios because mm -hmm. like, for instance, last night it was, um, it was about a mother who has two young children. Mm -hmm. So to, to her, if she took care of herself, uh -huh. and if she gave herself time, <laughs> she would be depriving her, ah. her children. Mm -hmm. So I told her to give me two weeks, and I gave her a series of exercises mm -hmm. and some reading material, but manageable, something mm -hmm. that she can do in 20 or 30 minutes a day, mm -hmm. because I think really it's, it's doing something religiously every day, making it part of your routine, that that really convinces your subconscious that this is the path to go mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so a daily practice is so important mm -hmm. and so i start my patients off with a daily practice of around 20 minutes mm -hmm. just so that it's doable for yeah. them yeah and i'm curious what are some of these tools that you're giving your patients for a daily practice oh this is something i'd like to share with you <laughs> okay um, share with us <laughs> Um, the simplest one we do is the five love languages because mm -hmm. it's already out there. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a bestseller. It's something that is uh, that everyone is familiar with, mm -hmm. and yet um, the book is designed for couples to um, how couples can relate to each other. Mm -hmm. What we do uh, with the five love languages is that we bring it in and we teach person how to be fluent in the five love languages mm -hmm. so if the first is let's say physical touch mm -hmm. um, I tell them to turn on their um, to put the timer on their cell phone mm -hmm. and to um, play nice music and to to actually do touch to to feel the body mm -hmm. to, to feel the skin mm -hmm. and I have a patient who actually did this um, with coconut oil uh -huh. and she did a whole ritual at night with coconut <laughs> oil and, and essential oils and when she came back she was glowing <laughs> and <laughs> so um my patients have um gotten very very creative mm -hmm. you know even just with the hair just with the face or just mm -hmm. to um just for you to come into contact with your body and mm -hmm. give and receive for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the second will be um, the mirror exercise for mm -hmm. words of affirmation. Okay. Louis Hay made this famous and we integrate it mm -hmm. to, to the five love languages where you stare into the mirror for two minutes again. So mm -hmm. it's really manageable. It's mm -hmm. two minutes, two minutes. And you do your I am uh, affirmations. So mm -hmm. I am beautiful, I am kind, nice. I am intelligent, nice. I am love mm -hmm. and you just repeat that while looking at your own eyes mm -hmm. for for mm -hmm. two minutes mm -hmm. and sometimes you kind of have to force the issue yeah. um there are times where i really write it out on post-its mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i tell my patients to put it <laughs> on their mirror and all they have to do is read or sometimes i do mm -hmm. a recording mm -hmm. and they just have to repeat after me so whatever works for them because mm -hmm. this is the one that most people have a hard time yeah. doing 
Because I feel like we look, I, I remember reading Cheryl Richardson's book that she co-wrote with Louise Hay, and she said she, she was doing the positive affirmation, Louis, I love myself, I'm beautiful, I'm, I'm magnificent, I'm a treasure. And she looked, and she was, and, but the whole time, her mind was going, are you kidding yourself? That's not true. Are you really sure? You're a liar. And she went into so much judgment, but she was persistent in, in doing it on a daily basis. And I think, I can't remember what she said, how long it took her. But after a while, the voices stopped, and then, because she kept continuing to do it, and then after another while, she actually became addicted to doing it every day. She was missing something. So it's so interesting that you're saying this is like the biggest challenge that people or your patients sometimes are facing to yes. actually, you know, just say these these beautiful things to themselves. Absolutely, and yeah. and your mirror word, like mm -hmm. you know how you enter an elevator and yeah. there's a mirror. Mm -hmm. We subconsciously tell ourselves a mirror word every mm -hmm. time we look into the mirror. Ah, uh -huh. And so I tell people to be aware and be mm -hmm. conscious of your mirror word mm -hmm. and change it to mm -hmm. something that will support you. Yeah, yeah. That it, because mm -hmm. really, you're going to start believing what you tell yourself. Exactly, right? so, exactly. With, with that being said, what do, do you teach people to pay more attention or do you actually look at what, what programs they're running in their mind all day? Yes, we yeah. do. But that's towards um, mm -hmm. the middle part of the program. Mm -hmm. We don't do that in the, in in the, the beginning. beginning. In the beginning, mm -hmm. it's first being, being aware of, of your presence, of yourself, mm -hmm. and then having that time for stillness, I think, mm -hmm. is the most important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in psychoneurology, we say that a great measure of happiness is the amount of time you can spend by yourself in stillness mm -hmm. doing nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. And so um, early on mm -hmm. in the program, I teach uh, my patients to, to really set the time for stillness. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're very, very stressed, then I recommend a longer time or sporadic times during the day, which is mm -hmm. actually better than just meditating for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also breath work to mm -hmm. keep you in, in, in touch with your, mm -hmm. with your inner vibration nice. is, is also very important. Nice. And, and when you implement these, these, you said like 20, 30 minutes a day things with your patients, what are the, some, do you have a share of like a beautiful transformation you can share with us? You <laughs> or, know, with just that short mm -hmm. amount of time, because mm -hmm. when they see it, this usually happens in the first session mm -hmm. and I tell them to come back after two weeks, but mm -hmm. to journal everything. Mm -hmm. And the minute they walk in after two weeks, <laughs> you'll <already see> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and it's usually, oh my God, it's that easy. <laughs> and, right? Wow. Because um, people really do not, I mean, I'm generalizing here, but people really do not take the time to be with mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. and just like the company they're keeping. Yeah. Yeah. How has doing that affected your own personal life? Oh, I spend a lot of time alone. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, I'm lucky enough for our family to have a home in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And so I make it a point to go there mm -hmm. at least every other month and spend like five, six days yeah. just by myself. And then I invite friends to come mm -hmm. join me mm -hmm. after. But that is my time for me. Mm -hmm. And I do make time, no matter how busy I am, mm -hmm. I have my one day a week um, where I don't do anything. Beautiful. And how are you feeling doing that, Leah? What, how are you feeling now that you're doing that compared to how you felt before you did all that? Oh, I don't even remember the kind of person. <laughs> you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this whole growth process to me is the mm. most priceless experience mm -hmm. anybody yeah. can yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Because um, you're constantly growing and you're constantly experiencing new things. Mm -hmm. And so change becomes just a regular part of your life. And so mm -hmm. you, I, I, I adapt to change quite easily. Mm -hmm. And 
it's quite fascinating when I see friends that I haven't seen in a while and, and they look at me and like, why are you so different? And <laughs> every, because, every month at the meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we change so much really yeah. quickly. Yeah. And but that's a good thing mm-hmm. because that's, it shows evolution. It shows evolution. I actually want to circle back to something that you mentioned at the beginning of, of our interview. You said that, we're moving currently from from believing that self love is selfish or even narcissistic, to oh. teaching that self love is the most important thing you can do for yourself. Why yes. is that? How does self love affect us, our lives, on, on on so many different levels? Well, it leads to thriving mm-hmm. in in all aspects of your life, body, mind, and mm-hmm. spirit, and. It's really when you nurture yourself, I think the first stage is learning how to nurture yourself mm-hmm. because when you nurture yourself, it leads to self-acceptance, yeah. which is the second stage yeah. where you stop judging yourself. Mm-hmm. And of course, when you stop judging yourself, mm-hmm. it just follows that you stop judging others. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a huge amount of acceptance that mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. And When there is acceptance, there's also detachment from anything that doesn't serve you. Mm -hmm. And so in order to raise your vibration, you need to nurture yourself first because that's what's going to lead to Mm -hmm. self-acceptance. And when you're in that state, the only only other course is is empowerment. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, we call it Mm self-sovereignty, where... It's you're your own person and it's safe to be you mm-hmm. and you're just happy being you. Yeah, yeah. And so it's something that you really need to work on every single day, mm-hmm. just like brushing your teeth or taking mm-hmm. a shower or mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a cup that you need filling mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. And you just said, I think you just said the most important thing. It's something you have to do every day yes. where it's, you know, the, because we've been taught the opposite for so long. Yes. It's a yes. new, new muscle that we have to train. Absolutely. And it's not a goal. Self-love <laughs> isn't a goal. There's no finish line. <laughs> I get that question a lot. How do I know if I have self-love? Yeah. Or how long will it take for me to have self-love? <laughs> and I'm like, you're missing the point. Um, <laughs> and then I said, I, I always tell them, you go through the feelings. You mm-hmm. go through the, the vibration mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And that you'll know when, yeah. when yeah. <laughs> you're doing it for yourself. <laughs> that absolutely. I, I just want to share something with you. Like some, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a really good daily practice of, you know, breathing or meditation. And I love like my meditation is actually to go for nature walks. And luckily where I am, it's five minutes to my hiking trail. And that is kind of my meditation. That is my way of, of self-love. And especially after a long day or if I have if, if I'm too much in my mind, I need to go out into nature. And sometimes I feel like distraction shows up the moment I want to take care of myself and move into self-love. I go, I have these plans of meditating and right that moment, someone needs my attention or (laughs) this thing has to be taken care of. Or all of a sudden you look at the time and it's time to do X, Y, C. How do you deal or how do you teach your patients to deal with these distractions when they're shop? How can we overcome these distractions so we can move into that balance and harmony of self-care, but then also being able to show up for external demands again? Show up for yourself first. Mm -hmm. And and this is where priorities come in. Mm -hmm. And when you communicate to yourself, to your subconscious, that you're the priority, that's exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't make your meditation after Mm -hmm. what you've done. You do Mm -hmm. it actually before what mm-hmm. you're supposed to do. <laughs> so it, it's more like it's it's really, I, I guess the best analogy will be taking a shower. You would never leave home or go to bed without taking a shower yeah. or, or brushing your teeth for that mm-hmm. matter. Yeah. So why can't self-love be so integrated mm-hmm. into your life mm-hmm. that it is actually just something you do it's mm-hmm. no longer something you plot out mm-hmm. so it's no longer a chore so no more no. Ex- yeah yes mm-hmm. 
So no more excuses, people. <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about the five love languages. Are there any other tools you want to share with our Rebel Hearts audience about how we can implement more self-love in our life or even change from that old paradigm of sacrifice into a new paradigm of nurturing and self-care? Yes. Well, like you said, nurturing and self-care, but I think the easiest way to do it is to be aware and calibrate to your vibration at mm. all times. Mm -hmm. In psychoneurology, we define vibration as the combination of your feelings and mm -hmm. your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it's like your internal weather vane. Uh -huh. And by being um, aware of that at all times and mm -hmm. making sure that at all times you're vibrating at mm -hmm. your highest frequency, then, then you get out of the, what should I do? What mm -hmm. should I say? Yeah. Because you just do more of what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and see, getting rid of that guilt on doing more of what makes mm -hmm. you feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the hurdle that, mm -hmm. that needs to be. Because guilt is something that doesn't serve you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so when you just keep doing things that make you feel good, thinking thoughts that make you feel good, feeling feelings yeah, that make you yeah. feel good, then you automatically feel good mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. without getting into the cerebral aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. And I actually want to share something with you. I, Jarvis, who's here on the other side of the screen, who is my amazing producer and engineer over there, who's popping up with all these cool images that you see on the screen, Rebel Hearts. We had a conversation right before we started your interview about how we are so um, programmed in a way to not listen to the, our intuition, like how, you know, to, 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 how do we connect to what we're really feeling? Oh, wow. I just wrote an article on that. Okay, share uh, with us. Jarvis, when answering our questions. And, <laughs> and um, really, it's your intuition that is your compass. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can come from your intuition is, again, to make sure that your vibrational hygiene mm -hmm. is impeccable mm -hmm. and that you're always vibrating at the highest frequency so that you're able to calibrate your intuition. Mm -hmm. Because your intuition is just that really soft voice that, um, you know, it, it's a whisper. Mm -hmm. and, and so to be sensitive to that whisper is I think the key to, to happiness yeah, because yeah. that whisper is never going to lead you astray. Mm -hmm. and, and intuition is present even in our bodies. Like mm -hmm. our bodies will send us signals all the time if mm -hmm. something's not right or something mm -hmm. is right. Yeah, yeah. It's the same yeah. as our <laughs> um, feelings. So mm -hmm. intuition is not just your feelings mm -hmm. or that, that gut, that Mm -hmm. that inner voice it's 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 also calibrated in your body and i yeah. think really that's key mm -hmm. that's that's a key yeah and it's interesting because we we just interviewed another woman another spiritual healer before your interview and and it's it's interesting because it feels like women are being given more like it, it, like in, this is just a paradigm I'm I'm describing. Women are often giving more permission to go into their emotion, to go into their feelings compared to the man. Like women are okay to you know to cry and to have an emotional outburst, but men have been so strongly taught you have to be strong, and if you cry, you're a girl, and you know don't be emotional, don't be weak. It's actually been such a paradigm of weakness to show emotions for the masculine. So how do we change that paradigm? How do we give both sides permission to access our emotions? Well, it's amazing how <clears throat> aligned we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you wrote an article about this? <laughs> no, it, this is actually a retreat that I'm planning to give towards the end of the year oh. where we work on the sacred masculine. But Jarvis, you have to go to Manila. Yes, you do, Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm putting together a list of facilitators now mm -hmm. To um, and unfortunately, we're going to have to bring them in because mm -hmm. um, no one in our culture speaks of the sacred masculine because mm -hmm. of exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. um, where this this whole uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's like the machismo culture. It's mm -hmm. it's the same in Spanish as it is in the Philippines, <laughs> and and where you know men need to um, have 
a certain way of behaving, a certain yeah. way of acting. Yeah. And so the sensitivities mm. of these men are completely repressed. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's exactly what we're, we're going through we're planning on mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. towards the end of the year is to do a retreat and create a safe space for men who want to discover their spirituality, mm -hmm. who want to learn how to tap into their intuition, who mm -hmm. want to know how to raise their vibration. Because yeah. I think um, the sacred feminine is, is now really, really strong mm -hmm. and we need to help develop you know, the divine masculine yes. as well. Yes, I'm, I'm getting full chills as you're saying that. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel like even because you're planning it as a retreat, do you sometimes feel or see that man, you know, have to come together in a group in order to re receive pretty much the permission to access these emotions? Well, I think that when they see other people, particularly people that they know and mm -hmm. people that they hang out with going through it, then mm -hmm. a support group is needed, even with women. It's just that we're so good finding, we're so good in looking and finding mm -hmm. our support group. But mm -hmm. um, for men, it, it's not, at least I think, it's mm -hmm. not that easy for them. Mm -hmm. And so when you create an instant support group, there is a shared experience mm -hmm. experience in a retreat yeah. and it gives them an instant support group mm -hmm. with each other because they're sharing um, you know very intimate side of themselves mm -hmm. which is why we keep it exclusively for mm -hmm. for men but we also are doing one in november for couples mm -hmm. uh, so it's called sacred intimacy nice. where it's um, it's a couples retreat mm -hmm. so there's a and and I believe that people are in different stages in their lives, which is why we give these um, these highly specialized retreats mm -hmm. so that they can um, they can experience yeah. uh, different aspects of themselves. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely absolutely amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, and, and for me, I'm like I'm I'm listening to what you're saying about the sacred feminine, the sacred masculine. What kind of vision are you holding for the future? If we can, you know, teach enough people, like I always talk about the critical mass, if we can teach the critical mass on both sides about self-love and the yeah. sacredness of, of that union between the mass and the feminine. Don't you think the world will be a much happier place? Absolutely. I think people yeah. <laughs> will actually be kinder to each other, more compassionate to each other. And, mm -hmm. and it's doable. Mm -hmm. It's, absolutely doable it's mm -hmm. just about really reframing the thought patterns mm -hmm. of um of people and we're also starting with um adolescents now mm -hmm. teaching them self-love at an early age because mm -hmm. i think this is actually something that needs to be taught in school oh, we were yeah. never taught mm -hmm. self-love in mm -hmm. school and um if we are, if we raise our children in this environment and we start spreading this kind of um, of teaching and these thoughts and these feelings, then, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it goes without yeah. saying that the world will definitely be a better place. Mm -hmm. Like. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's so beautiful. You, you had the Healing Center in Manila, and we had Joey and, and Nathan from the Healing Center. We teach the Rainbow Children program on the uh -huh. show last year. And one of the beautiful things is kind of, you know, what you are also sharing is like, well, how can we change the world by changing the way we raise our children? What can we implement now that will make a difference in the world in 10, 20 years down the road? How will our systems, our structures, corporations, how will the world look like if we taught self-love exactly. from an early age? Exactly. But see, the parents need to learn it first. Yeah. Mm. And then the teachers need to learn it second exactly. <laughs> before it can be taught to the children. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of work to be done, but there's also a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's just all work together yeah. towards, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. towards this goal. Mm -hmm. That is so absolutely amazing and beautiful. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit more about some of the tools that you're working with in psychoneurology that you've been working with with your patients. And um, you already talked about, you know, the daily practices of showing up 
for yourself or taking time out for yourself. Are there any other tools you can share with our Rebel Hearts community? And I'm thinking more about people who are constantly busy, maybe people running their own companies or people who have young children, whether they have to show up as a mother, where they have to show up for the family. Like, how can we create, you know, time for ourselves or what kind of tools can we bring in so we can then show up fully again? Or, you know, let's say we have a job that requires a lot of energy and a lot of attention. What can we do to counter the effects of daily stress that we are exposed to in our lives? Yes, well, there are many different ways. And again, it's it's part of your consciousness. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, even the food you eat mm -hmm. will contribute tremendously to yeah. your vibrational state. Yeah. So, and that you can, you can easily implement. Mm -hmm. um, I think, especially in the United States, where mm -hmm. it's, it's so easy to get um, good food, mm -hmm. even in yeah. the grocery yeah. store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that ought to be utilized a lot. Like, mm -hmm. what, what are you putting into mm -hmm. your body mm -hmm. in terms of food? What are you putting into your body in terms of thought? I mean, you're thinking all the time. So regardless of mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. if you just monitor your thoughts, mm -hmm. that act alone will mm -hmm. give you tremendous transformational changes in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. Breathing. Mm -hmm. um, just paying attention to the breath, yeah, um, taking yeah. the time mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, there's a famous breath, breathing exercise made famous by Dr. Andrew Vail. Mm -hmm. It's called the 478. Mm -hmm. And it's quick. It's easy. Mm -hmm. You inhale through the nose on four. You hold it for seven and you release it through your mouth for eight counts. Mm. And all you need to do is to... Um, do this for about three or four rounds mm -hmm. and you will immediately go into relaxation mode. Yeah. Yeah. You also have um, pulse points. Mm -hmm. So um, if you press these two areas over here, like on the second wrist line mm -hmm. and you just press it, um, this will give you um, almost instant uh, relaxation. These mm -hmm. are the parasympathetic points. Mm -hmm. So if you press both, so it, you don't really need to carve out even five minutes. Mm -hmm. You just sit there in a big meeting. <laughs> while you're cooking, so, while, yeah, the, it, while it, the carrots are on the stove. Really, yeah, it, you have to press a little bit harder, but um, yeah, and but not so hard. <laughs> You know, and I, I thank you for sharing that. The reason why I asked for these tools, I'm like, yes, we want to have the 20 minute time, but it, you know, I love these quick little kind of like a re the reset buttons that we can push to exactly. get us realigned because you know, we might be sitting in a meeting and might be stressed out. And what can we do right in that moment? So that was so perfect. So thank you for saying that. And then we can yeah. do our 20, 30 minute meditation or exactly. self care, or breath even work. Like a mudra with yeah. your hands. If if your hands are in a certain position, it also helps direct energy mm -hmm. flow. Yeah. So it, yeah. Yeah. There's so many things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What are some of the biggest changes? You know, you you've, let's say you had a client who was struggling with self love, who was really stuck in that old paradigm of sacrifice and suffering. And what did you see in that person happening by implementing these changes over a longer period of time? Oh, I love this success story. I have mm -hmm. um, a housewife who mm -hmm. came to me mm -hmm. and she was so lost. She didn't, she was feeling like she had everything, but she mm -hmm. wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And she was feeling that she needed to do more with her life. And she actually uh, diagnosed herself as depressed. Oh, and and okay. she, she came to me yeah. and, and so I put her in the program and mm -hmm. we, we worked together for mm -hmm. around three months. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I did not hear from her yeah. for about another three months. And then I just heard that she launched a major clothing company oh. <laughs> using um, indigenous, uh, indigenous weavers mm -hmm. from her, her home province. So mm -hmm. she's now employing all these women who have been taught weaving wow. from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. She's making all these clothes. She's mm -hmm. now available in New York. <laughs> uh, she was featured 
um, by CNN mm -hmm. uh, International. Yeah. And so she's amazing. Mm -hmm. And she really found her purpose. Mm -hmm. And I, I love telling that mm -hmm. story because mm -hmm. it's a story of how, you know, she went back to her roots mm -hmm. and created something from it. So now she's created a whole livelihood mm -hmm. for these women. And mm -hmm. it's in a war torn area. So wow. beautiful story. And you, thank you for sharing that, Someone, What is so mm -hmm. fascinating for me, hearing that story, how you implemented these tools, which ultimately led to self love, to her finding a path that she loves. And I kind of see the same with you. I've known you for about five years now. And I see and I see the shifts and changes in your life. And I'm like, thank you. you know, stepping into self love. How much has that influenced the path you're on right now? It's everything. It's everything. <laughs> it's absolutely everything. It's it's the it's the foundation. Mm -hmm. It really is the yeah, foundation yeah. for everything, mm -hmm. even for for career, for relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, for the first time in my life, all my relationships are harmonious. Wow. There's no conflict in that. And normally it's in your relationships yeah. that you see mm -hmm. you know, how you are with yourself because mm -hmm. we're all just mirrors of each other. Yeah. And so yeah. if your relationships are in conflict, it's just mm -hmm. a reflection of what's happening inside you. Exactly. So I think it's a good gauge to mm -hmm. see, a good gauge um, to see where your relationships are at, mm -hmm. to see what your relationship is like with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And it for me, it also feels like what I've seen in your life and even in my life. When you move into self-love, you have no more tolerance for anything that is not yes. love or not in alignment with loving yourself. So exactly. it brings in different relationships or it heals relationships that are already present. And it also, for me personally, it was like when I moved more and more into self-love, I couldn't work a job or work for a person that made me unhappy. I was literally driving to work one morning and I was getting so angry that I had to show up because I had been showing up because of it and not because I loved myself. Yes. And, and it was so, so hard for me and I had to make that change. So, yeah. That's absolutely, absolutely it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you weed out mm -hmm. everything that does yeah. not help yeah. your vibrational yeah. state. Yeah. And, and when you weed it out, it's not weeded out because mm -hmm. it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's just weeded out because it's not a match yeah. to you. Yeah. And I actually want to circle back to something you just mentioned, where you said you look at relationships or even you look at your, your environment as a mirror or as a calibration, as you say in psychoneurology, as a calibration of where you are right now. <laughs> and then <laughs> recalibrate, you know, what do we need to do in order to get where you're at? And I think that is such an important point because, again, old paradigm, we've been taught to look at our environment and our relationships from a point of judgment or even shame and instead of from a place of, of calibration. Share yes. more with me about the whole calibration and, and the mirror of our environment and how we can use them to navigate to a new, I don't know, a new place, a new happiness, a new area of joy. I think the easiest way to explain that is the, well, the universal law of what you focus on will expand. Mm -hmm. And so it's psychoneurology. We don't really go back to the past and trace your story and trace mm -hmm. it from the time you were five mm -hmm. and, and, <laughs> and go back to that. What we do is we focus on where we want to go and do whatever it takes now mm -hmm. to put us in the same vibration yeah, yeah. as where we want to go. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, it becomes a very purposeful and very directive approach to your inner mm -hmm. being um, mm -hmm your inner state. And when you focus on, on what you want and you create it for yourself as if you already have it in your space now, mm -hmm. it, it just happens. Yeah. That's just happens. so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what do you tell people who look at the environment and still see themselves as a victim of their environment? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I don't tell them anything unless they ask for help. Okay. Uh, because if you 
try to go into a full explanation to someone who's not yet ready mm-hmm. they go into a huge defense mm-hmm. they go into defense mode yeah. and so um anyone who asks me i definitely go into the whole <laughs> spiel but i i i don't normal i wouldn't just talk about it in dinner party for instance mm-hmm. um, because it's uh it's something i think that's so personal to each individual mm-hmm. and that when they're sick and tired of being in that victim mode mm-hmm. then that's when you have the best opportunity yeah. to change it because mm-hmm. if they're still in the victim mode and they're still enjoying it <laughs> exactly i, <don't> <laughs> I think that's the key good. point <laughs> yeah Yeah, I think that's the key point. Still enjoying it, or still we call it, you know, we call it secondary gain. Yes, We're getting exactly. something out of it. <laughs> out of it, exactly. <laughs> and 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 maybe since you said it's so individual with each person, is there maybe something you know one specific example you can give us about something that would help people to move from being a victim of circumstance to actually really embracing the power that is so innate in each and every one of us to create change in our lives i've noticed it's from patients who say i don't want this anymore mm-hmm. i know there's something better out there yeah. for me i don't want this anymore mm-hmm. and that's my cue mm-hmm. and that's when i know that i can mm-hmm. work with this yeah. person yeah yeah they have to not want it anymore. Mm-hmm. That's so beautiful. Thank you. I just got <laughs> our 5 minute signal over here and I actually want to ask you what has been the most inspiring thing for you on the journey that you're on right now. What inspires you the most about what you're doing? Oh, there's a lot, but <laughs> I think if I had to <laughs> if I had to choose one it's i would bring it back to myself and mm-hmm. and really see the growth that has occurred mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. the way i think the way i uh feel mm-hmm. the way i um respond to people mm-hmm. respond to situations so i think i would still still use myself as an inspiration for myself mm-hmm. to keep going no. um because it's really something that i um feel that everybody should have mm-hmm. but at the same time <laughs> i can't convince people yeah. that because um they need to be able to experience it on their own mm-hmm. and so i would still go back to my journey yeah. my my growth and mm-hmm. how i have evolved mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. continue to yeah. evolve yeah Yeah. And and I feel like this is exact you're making such an amazing point over there that you cannot convince anyone. But for me, Leah, you're such an example of someone who's kind of lighting the way and by just showing up and showing people what's possible is inspiring others. Thank you Thank for you doing so that. Much. Yeah. That means a lot. Thank <laughs> you. Because you are a witness to my journey I from am. day one. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And do you have one more last message for the Rebel Hearts audience out there? Uh do one thing for yourself today. Whatever it is you're doing today, do one act of service for yourself today. Whatever that is. It mm-hmm. can be stopping for five minutes or it can be sleeping in the whole day whatever mm-hmm. you want to do for yourself to just nurture yourself today just mm-hmm. just do it and see the difference amazing. in that one little action amazing thank you that is such a perfect note to finish off i want to thank you so much for being on today's show lia thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge and your beautiful light it's been such a gift to speak with you today Thank you thank, thank you thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here and happy to be in your company. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you thank you. <laughs> All right, Rebel Hearts, that's it for today. I hope you are as inspired as I am and are starting to implement some of the tools that Leah shared with us today. Well, 
wrap it up for today and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for the next show of Rebel Hearts. Remember, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can listen to the replays on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and watch it on YouTube. Go to christyreeves.com where all the replay links are up. And have, if you haven't done so, subscribe to our iTunes podcast and leave us a five-star rating because... You, you subscribing to our iTunes podcast and leaving us a review is actually helping us to bring amazing guests to you. So thank you so much for joining. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. And remember to rebel on. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com.